Hello, thank you for joining me, and thank you for coming back. This is our second video in our series on uh, creating room schedules, and uh, what we're going to be doing in this schedule, in this video, actually, is kind of cleaning up our schedule a little bit. As I mentioned before, the schedule is a database. It's a visual representation of the text and the annotations associated with the database, and where you can make modifications here. So. You'll notice that we do have two rooms that are kind of redundant to each other. We have room 18 and 19. It calls them redundant. Uh, it identifies a room that's already there. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we go to our first floor, we have a living room 2 and room number 18 identified in the same place. If we click on the text here and delete that, it kind of takes it out, but it's really still kind of there because that X is still there. It's still identifying that area. So we'll close out that area and let's go down and look at our schedule again. And our schedules are going to be in the schedule folder now in our project browser. So we took that room out, even though we took the label out, it's still kind of there. So we can go back and do this again. If we find that X, it's associated with that room, that uh, associated with the label of that room. There it is. Sometimes you have to scoot out to get that. If we delete that, we still get an error. It says the room is deleted from all model views, but still remains in this project which means it's still in the database. We can still access it. So let's go ahead and look at that, uh, the way that looks in our database, in our schedule that uh, represented the, uh, the database. So we have room number 18, which really isn't named, but it's given a number. It says it's not placed. You know, we really don't want that room. We don't have any room for room 18 anyway, so we're going to go ahead and delete that. A couple things you could do. Click on one of these fields and delete that row, or you can go up here and delete it up under the ribbon and delete it. Now delete that one item. We're going to do the same thing with room number 19. Delete that row. So that gets rid of those rooms. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. Uh, the database is a really good way to manipulate the, the text and uh, the data that's associated with those rooms. Of course the rooms can be manipulated in the floor plans too, but sometimes the floor plans won't show the rooms. It may not be apparent that there's a room label in the background there. And so the database is a really good way to look at it. Okay. But so, uh, one thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make everything capitalized. I know it's a little bit uh, redundant in a way and maybe a lot of busy work, but uh, um, it's something we're going to have to do. I don't see, I have not seen very often any exceptions to this rule that uh, just about any annotation that's on a drawing is typically capitalized. It makes your drawings look better. So when you get a chance, let's go ahead and change that. And uh, the next step we're going to do, we're going to cover this in a little bit more detail in the next uh, video, is we're going to sign some sort of some sort of uh, identifier for each one of these finishes. We're going to fill in the blanks for the wall finish, floor finish, floor finish, wall finish, base finish, and ceiling finish. And we're going to do this uh, both manually, the way we're doing it here, and for a room style schedule. Join me soon.